Hi guys, thanks for joining me for the moment I am setting up my brand new bullet journal for the remainder of 2021. I have finished this current one that we started in January and I'm ready to move on to the next. So if you're new here, these are my two patterned designs of bullet journals that I created. They are available to buy on my website and on Etsy, but I have been dying to start this tiger one, which is inspired by South Korea. And I just love the colors and I'm really happy with how the design turned out on this one. So I've been staring at it on my shelf and I can't wait to start filling it out. Now, any blank page that I see, I do feel I need to personalize. So I'm going to start this journal by doing a cover illustration to get me started. Now, in this book, I have provided a little emblem, emblem, an emblem for you to put your name into. And I did use that in my design last time, six months ago, but this time I think I'm going to cover over the top of it. So I just want to do an illustration more reflective of this one. I really liked how this turned out. So I want to try and get that same vibe across and so I'm going to cover this whole page with a piece of watercolor paper and do an illustration on that. So to try and capture that same vibe that I had going last year when I did the illustration of me in my studio at my desk using all my art supplies in my art journal or my bullet journal um, I just really liked that homely, you know, that art studio feel. So I wanted to try and capture that again, but this time focusing a little bit more on the environment and showing a little bit more of a studio space. So this is unfortunately not my real studio space. This is what I've got in my little dream pipelines when we one day create a bigger studio. So I do draw my dog in the scene. Um, this is him, Theo. So I thought I'd place him right in the center because he's always wherever I am. He's snuggled up somewhere. Um, you know, whenever I'm creating art, he's usually close by just resting in the sun and he's such a sun bear. Um, that's what we call him. He just loves to sleep in the rays of sunshine. Even when it's burning hot, like cracking hot, he'll be outside soaking up the sun. It's amazing. He touches fur and he's like burning to the touch, but he loves it. Um, so I wanted to include him and what I'm showing you here is the original vibe that I was loving. So I'm going to continue with that same style where I'm using mainly black fine liner to build some contrast where I can and then any shading is done with hatching. So just little tiny lines using the fine liner and then at the end I decide to pop in some color to try and bring the piece to life because although I love it just being um, black and white I do feel like it just needs some energy and I think that's what color brings. I had a lot of fun designing this this drawing itself. The initial perspective of it was pretty tricky to create from mind so there was a lot of erasing and rejigging to try and get exactly the elements that I wanted into the sketch because it was all in my mind. I just didn't know how to kind of illustrate it and still get it looking sort of sort of the right perspective. Still not bang on but I didn't mind having that sort of animated look to it as well. I did use some reference material for individual items like this chair. This chair I found online um, and it was an anthropology chair and I just, yeah, I just fell in love with it. It's so gorgeous. It's all multiple, multi-colors with lovely textured fabrics on each different part of it. It's like a patchwork, but yeah, beautiful. I loved it. So I definitely wanted to include that in my dream space. Um, and then elements I have used of my current studio. So the Ikea, what are they called? Iva units. I have those in my current studio, which are on that back wall. And they are awesome for holding all of my art supplies, all neatly tucked away in this drawing. Not so neat in real life. Um, but yeah, I love... Yeah, I loved designing this space. It was just so much fun. And to be honest, the reason I wanted to do this as well is because this is hopefully in the pipeline down the track, like maybe in a couple of years time, um, my husband and I might be able to extend into our single carport and turn that into a studio. That's our little idea, our little seed that's been planted in our brain. <laughs> and I just really like the thought of it. Um, I would add the bay window that would look out over, we have a maple tree at the front of our house. And so that kind of idea was already in my brain of developing this studio. And I've been thinking about, you know, how I would decorate it and how we would place things, um, both for filming and for like my practical 
you know, practical art jobs that I'm doing at home as well. So I sort of had this inspiration already and this was just an ideal spot to keep it in my journal. So if we never do this, I'll know that I can look back at this journal and say, oh yeah, that's right. That's when we were going to extend into that room. So that's one good thing about creating a space in your drawing because it's like you're buying it in reality. If you can't um, afford something in particular, just draw it and it makes you feel like you've had it. <laughs> um, and that's what I was going with here. So then I was picturing how I would decorate it and what kind of rug I would put underneath this anthropology chair. I went for a jute rug, which you saw me just, I quickly searched, I've seen them at Kmart before, so I just grabbed a picture of one of them at Kmart and just drew that down there. Um, yeah, and then just filled in any blank areas that I wanted to kind of add some just environmental touches to it. Um, I kept the outside the windows very simple because I knew that I wanted to use some gold watercolor. And then the, the final part of this was drawing in me at the window. And this face that I'm tapping right now is really creepy. So I got rid of that. And the way I get rid of it, um, even though I was very sad because I was like, oh no, you know, how am I gonna fix this? I was thinking about it. So I just got out the trusty white gel pen and just went over the top of the elements I didn't like, which I think in the end might be the entire face. At first I thought it was just the mouth and nose, but I'm pretty sure I go through the whole face and get rid of it. And then that kind of gives you a clean slate to start with. And then what I decided to do is because it's such a small little area is to just go really simple, almost put dots where um, shadows would be. So rather than lines for eyes, I kind of just did a few little tiny little stippling dots just to give the effect that there's some shading there. And then same for the nose and mouth. And then we finally got it to a place where I was happy to call it finished. Now a little tip that I sometimes do with projects where I really want it to work and I don't want to risk messing it up when I'm really happy with how it's currently going. What I do is I take a photo, just a quick photo with my phone of the artwork and I chuck it into Photoshop on my computer and just quickly color the elements that I want to color in black. Just so that if you sometimes add too much black, it ends up getting a little bit, um, it sort of does the opposite effect. It kind of becomes too full on. Or, so I just want to get the right balance of lightness and darkness. So by doing it in Photoshop first, it alleviates the pressure on me to get it right first time, you know? So I'm once I'm happy with how much darkness I've put on, I make sure to color those areas. So that's a little sneaky tip to help you get past that fear of adding too much or too little. And then it was time to add in the contrasting parts. So that's adding a lot of black in areas just to try and make it not so flat and a little bit more interesting to look at. And of course, if you don't have Photoshop, there are free programs out there like um, Krita, or I think you can still get paint um, and just, you know, just use it quite crudely and just add in a little bit of black paintbrush over areas. It just gives you, you can see it better in your brain and just know for sure that you're coloring the right areas for your piece. So as I'm doing this, you can already see how much depth it's adding and just it's more interesting to look at having that variation in the tones. And I absolutely could have left it here. I really wasn't sure whether to add color or not, but I did decide to add that pop because the rest of it was gonna be color anyway, and I didn't want this to be lost amongst that. So any excuse to use my gold watercolors, I will do. So I pulled those out and got ready to just include gold in areas where I thought maybe it was sunshine coming in. So I wanted to do the windows in the gold and then have a reflection, or not a reflection, a um, ray of sunshine from those windows cast down across Theo in the middle of the floor. So I'm just using um, just the yellow gold for this and just a little bit of water, trying to keep it as muted as I can because I didn't want it to be too much. But yeah, and then what I did is once I'd done the windows, I just tried to put a little highlight of this gold onto pieces where the sun might hit in the room. So obviously across Theo down the bottom and then just on the edges of some elements throughout the piece. Then here I thought I was done, so I pulled up the tape I was at least done with the watercolor side, so that was safe to pull up the tape. And then I'm cutting it up and sticking it into the journal. And I have scanned this before I did it um, because I do like the piece, so I wanna keep that in case I would like to make prints of it or something. Um, so then cut it in half, stuck it into the journal, and then once it was in the journal, that's when I felt 
oh damn, it needs more colour. So I went in with some coloured pencils. So I grabbed a few colours from my Prismacolor Premier pencils and I chose three main colours that I was going to use, which is a sort of a pale peach, a pale green, and then this gorgeous blue that I am obsessed with right now. It's almost like just such a pale, I think you would call this cornflower blue, but I love it. And I think the three colours just work so nicely together, probably because they're all in that same like level they're all quite pale in themselves um, muted and I just think that works really nicely with a soft especially a soft studio shot like this it just makes me want to go and chill out and read a book on that chair or you know sit in that bay window so I'm glad that I went ahead and added the color <laughs> and then she was finished and it was time to move on to the actual setup so a new day, a new red shirt and a new quote for the front page. I came across a very nice quote that really struck a chord with me and it's a goal without a plan is just a wish. So I just felt that this was perfect for a bullet journal setup because one, it's a place where you want to plan your goals for the year or the months ahead. It's a place where you want to plan everything out and create your reality, you know, create your goals and achieve them. And so that they're not just wishes, you know, you don't just wish to be successful. You set the goal, you set the plan and the success will follow. So that is where my head was at. And I also like the thought of just adding a little bit of magic in there. And with the word wish immediately, I thought of magical, you know, fairy dust and magical wands and sparkles and things and that gave me the idea of drawing a little jar where someone may have put their goals in and then there's just little magic dust around so it's like a jar is captured with all the magical dust inside but unfortunately there's no lid on it so it's just escaping so it was kind of a metaphor for like you know don't bother making a goal if you can't plan for it does that make sense I hope so. So that's where this idea came from and the inspiration for this drawing. And I'm really happy with adding the gold because it just gives me magical feelings and beauty. And I also used a little bit of washi tape to add some more color in there and make it really interesting. And now moving on to the next page, which is the grid spacing guide. So this is very handy tool to have throughout the months ahead of setting up because you wouldn't believe how many times I've had to count dots in these bullet journals um, and this just saves you the bulk of them. So it gives you a, you count all the dots vertically and write it down, count the dots horizontally, write it down and then you can go as deep as doing half pages, how much it is for a third of a page quarter of a page, things like that. But I just keep it simple and do the full page and a half a page. Um, so I end up just knowing roughly how many dots I need for each setup. And then I just flick back to this page if I ever forget. Um, so that's always handy to have. I like to put that in every bullet journal that I do. And then because that is using up the bulk of the page, it's nice to just put the key on that this page as well. So combine the two elements together. Um, and the key is, once again, I don't really need this anymore because it's ingrained in my brain. Um, but I always put it here as I am trying to show you guys how to do bullet journaling yourself. So yes, as a reference, you wanna do your key for each item possibility. So the first is a task and I do that as an open box. Then an in progress is the box half colored. Completed is you color the box in. Moved is when you put a little arrow in it. Cancelled, just strike it through. A note is a dash. A star is an event. A little birthday present is a birthday. And a love heart is a date. Um, so I like to use those in my dailies or weeklies or monthly spreads. And it's just a quick uh, way to reference exactly what it is you're doing. And I use it all the time and it's really working for me. So just thought I would quickly mention it here in case you wanted to set your first bullet journal up um, going by this guide. Now on this next page, I am doing something a little bit different to a goals list. So in my previous setup, I had a proper goals list for the year 
and I'm just giving myself a little pat on the back because most of them have been either achieved or they're already so ingrained in me that I'm focusing on them daily and monthly anyway. So I wanted to start something fresh for the rest of this year and really making it quite um, like achievable targets and things I want to accomplish like projects and little business ventures um, and things like that on this page and that's why I called it ventures it just gives me that traveling sort of vibe like an adventure um, and that the whole bullet journal theme is about adventure and exploring so it really made me think of that so instead of projects or goals I've decided to call this one ventures and here I've just filled some out which uh, might give you a little sneak peek into what's coming up ahead um, but yeah I really enjoyed this page and it's going to be something that I will feel very happy and proud to cross each item off and then moving on to the next page of this setup and this one is going to be uh, my theme calendar I guess you would call it so it's instead of like a year at a view it's just the next six months from July to December and in my last set up I had the idea to include the flags of the country that I'm visiting each month in the front of the book and that worked really well for the first four months the last two months I actually forgot to do them <laughs> um, but I have done them since then so they're all up to date now um, but yes yeah, so I thought if I made it a bit bigger on this page it will be more in my mind so I've just shifted the layout of the setup for this calendar I didn't worry about putting actual dates in because that's something also that I didn't really use last time but what I did use is the overview of what is in each month so the first month of July I will make sure to write all my July birthdays that I have to remember down in this space and then the bottom right I've left a little space for the flag so if you have followed my channel before you'll see that my July setup is coming in a couple of weeks and that will be on the theme of Greece so I'm going to be doing the Greece flag in that top left corner and then I didn't really have an idea of how I was going to decorate this page I knew that I love washi tape and it's a way to instantly add some color to your spreads so I got that straight out and just trimmed and ripped a little bit so that it looked a little bit more um, imperfect because it was certainly imperfect where my lines had gone wonky so I had to fix all that up anyway um, so I thought let's just go with that natural kind of ripped vibe um, and then just using cursive font to write the months and then just adding that gold feature so the unplanned color palette for this whole setup turned out being a bit of like a blue and gold theme um, but yeah it just really works and I love the little gold to add that little bit of magic to each page um, it's just heavenly and then just doing a little bit of faux calligraphy here which is where you basically write the letters in a calligraphy style and then if you don't have the calligraphy pen on you you just thicken up all of the downstrokes and if you want to learn more about calligraphy I have got a pretty comprehensive video on the channel if you haven't seen it um, and I've actually got a playlist of calligraphy stuff so if you're interested feel free to check that out and then I really enjoyed setting this page up because I suddenly got into this mind flow where I just felt like creating and then I just sort of started doing waves that reflected the shape of the tear in the washi tape and it just developed into these kind of waves um, and I threw in some gold and it just started to feel really almost planned like it was meant to look like this <laughs> and I just really had a lot of fun setting it up so this nice little pattern formed out of it so that's always rewarding when you just go with go with your gut at the time and see what you can come up with and so this is how the page turned out for our calendar our theme calendar for the rest of the year and then it was time to move on to the final page of the setup which is my cleaning calendar now I did do an annual cleaning calendar in the last bullet journal but this time I am now going to just do six monthly cleaning so I've called it my biannual cleaning calendar and on here I basically list all the chores that need to be done monthly um, and then some of them at the bottom that need to be done fortnightly and weekly so I then just add in my days uh, my months of the year remaining at the top which are these six blue boxes and then I go ahead and schedule each of those chores under a particular month so that I know it has to be done in that month and I'll transfer that into my monthly setup and then when I've achieved it I color in that little circle that I've made and then I know I have done it 
I never realized that if you put our letters down for the months of the year from July to December, it turns out writing Jason D. So no, I am not writing some guy's name on my calendar. They are the months of the year. And I say this because I have had questions before what those um, letters represent. So they are the months of the rest of the year. Now this double spread here, I had no idea what I was going to do. And I say this because if you've watched my content before, you see a lot of planning goes into it. And I pretty much know exactly what's going on each page um, before I go in with my color. But this one here, I just went free and I just started um, doodling or sketching and just went with my gut and it was just interesting patterns. I really like to do this sometimes. I've been doing this since I was a kid. I mean, as most of us are when we're at school, we're like, you know, drawing on our books and our notepads when we're supposed to be studying or learning. And I used to do this a lot for my borders in my school projects and things like that. So I just went, went with it and I, I think I had some nice music on in the background and I was just sketching. And so just making these pretty patterns and it ended up looking quite nice. Um, and it's something that I probably couldn't have planned without having that peace and that moment where you just trust and go with it. So sometimes it's really good to put away the pencil, put away the plan and just go with your feeling at the time. So yeah, just making a lot of patterns to try and decorate this page up. And then from there, it developed into something that could go across the entire spread. So I left it down in that bottom corner and then once I had my next page sorted, I continued it across and it ended up looking quite nice and interesting to look at. So still giving off that magic and that blue gold color palette and yeah, just really fun little decoration. And now moving on to the very final page of the setup, which is my reading list. Now I didn't have this in my last year's setup or my last six monthly setup, purely because I was going to do it um, throughout the year. And I have been reading Lee Child novels for a while now, and there's so many out there that I wanted to keep track of how many I've read and what I need to get and what I would like to, you know, what I need to read still. So I made a couple of months ago, a little reading list for me um, with Lee Child stuff and Vince Flynn. Right now they're my favorite authors and I just want to I just want to read all their books basically. So I wanted a list so that I can cross them off because I like lists if you haven't noticed. So I wanted a place to keep that in the front of my journal rather than in the monthly ones because obviously when I finish a book it might not be in that particular month. So it's kind of nice to keep that at the front I think. So this spread once again I didn't know what I was doing but I did know that I wanted to include an envelope. So I stuck the envelope in and that's where I can slide my little reading list into. And if I don't finish them this year, I can just pop that list into the next journal for next year. Um, and then I thought I would throw in some books on a bookshelf. And I'm really just trying to do some sketches and little quirky drawings around it and tie them into the pattern. So it was very therapeutic and quite relaxing. And it was just nice to just be free and draw whatever I liked at the time. So no pressure. I've also kept a space above the envelope for books that are outside of that because I have read one by Dervla McTiernan just recently and I didn't have her on my list. So I wanted to write that down too. I think it's nice to write down what books you've read. I've, I'm not someone who's been an avid reader forever. Um, I get kind of obsessed over some series and then, you know, then I become a reading nut and then I can not read for ages. It's a little bit bizarre. So as a kid, I remember reading Harry Potter, absolutely got obsessed um, and then read Lord of the Rings, obsessed. Then Hunger Games was amazing. Then discovered Agatha Christie and all the murder mysteries. I love murder mysteries and crimes and action thrillers. So it's just a whole bundle of stuff. And now I'm currently going through Lee Child, Vince Flynn, Dervil McTiernan stage. I'm probably just rambling now and I do apologize, but we are approaching the end of the doodling. So what fun I had. I do hope you try this in your own bullet journals. It is so much fun and you can do it while watching a movie or listening to some cool music. It's just really relaxing. So definitely give that one a try at home. So now I'm just titling this spread, the reading list. And I think that's all I'm gonna need at the front of my journal. And then all the other things I can just keep in my monthly setups. 
So as I mentioned before, the first month in this book will be July, which is going to be themed upon Greece, which I'm so excited for. Thank you so much to everyone who voted. And if you're new to the channel, I basically offer a choice between three countries of different populations. And then I let you guys vote on it and choose in the comments on my weekly setups. So here's the flip through for the setup so far and I'm really happy with it. I hope you guys like it too. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so and you can come on this adventure where we learn about new countries every month and what inspires me into my art journal setup. Um, also, I have a Patreon channel. If you're wanting to see more, please check that out. Thank you so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Have a great week. Bye.